The skull base is just as it sounds. It's the very bottom of the skull that really serves as the foundation for the brain and its really important contents. And so it tends to not only house important structures like the carotid artery and ear and balance structures, but has a lot of important blood vessels and nerves right around it uh, and can serve as a site for different pathologies that we, we are asked to see. Probably the most common conditions that we see that require expertise of a skull-based team are vestibular schwannomas, also known as acoustic neuromas, meningiomas, chordomas, chondrosarcomas, pituitary tumors are also accessed through skull-based surgical approaches, and other non-tumor pathologies like trigeminal neuralgia or defects of the base of the skull that we're asked to repair are probably the most common things that we see. Tumors at the skull base can, because they uh, are located near so many nerves and blood vessels that are so close to each other, can present in many different ways. For instance, uh, vestibular schwannomas or acoustic neuromas can very commonly present with noticeable hearing loss or dizziness, and that's a common way that patients come uh, to seek medical attention. Tumors a little bit farther forward can affect the visual system, so patients can notice visual loss in one or, or both eyes, and that's especially common with tumors in the pituitary gland that arise just underneath the visual nerves where they intersect. I think one of the distinct features of skull-based and pituitary surgery at the Brigham Women's Hospital is that there's not one approach that we rely on for everything. Uh, that is, we really have at our disposal and in our skill set any approach that's required to reach any corner of the skull base. That refers to more conventional, traditional skull base approaches where we actually occasionally remove parts of the skull base in order to get to different but difficult pathologies that are difficult to reach. Uh, and we also now employ uh, routinely uh, approaches that we are directed through the nasal cavity, so-called endonasal or uh, extended endonasal uh, approaches that take advantage of small cameras called endoscopes with strong light sources and tremendous visualization in order to reach tumors that historically may have been reached through larger incisions uh, in the top of the forehead. For the actual surgical approaches themselves, uh, once again, we have an appreciation that these pathologies span other areas of expertise from e ENT colleagues, for instance. So when we do endonasal surgery, especially if we're doing something uh, extensive, uh, we really appreciate and benefit from deep expertise in, that our ENT colleagues have in accessing some of these corridors. Similarly with, with what we call lateral skull-based surgery, especially as it relates to most commonly uh, vestibular schwannomas or acoustic neuromas, we take advantage of, of, of uh, the skill sets of our uh, neurotology colleagues who are experts in specifically the, the temporal bone as it relates to the labyrinth, the cochlea, and the hearing and balance apparatus in particular. So they help us and we work together to evaluate patients before surgery. We work together in the operating room and obviously in post-operative care uh, as well. We also now routinely see patients together in a multidisciplinary setting before surgery. So whereas in the past traditionally you may have four or five appointments in f five different addresses uh, and locations, we brought all the expertise together in one clinic, and so patients can often get multiple opinions and uh, a significant workup in, in one setting. A few years ago, we founded a translational skull-based tumor biology laboratory with the goal of trying to understand tumors that we operate on successfully, but also that might recur following standard treatments such as surgery and radiation. And so every tumor that we operate on not only is studied intensively by our pathologists, but with the patient's permission, is stored for intensive research purposes. So the, the work of the, on the patient actually continues well beyond the operation. We're studying those patients' tumors for months and, and potentially years in order to understand what's, what constitutes this tumor, what are the genetic elements that have given rise to this tumor, and how might that give us insight into how to treat these, these patients better.